gonna show you five ways to upgrade your table saw so that it cuts better, cleaner, and safer. The number one and easiest upgrade you can make to your table saw is absolutely the blade. The blades they send with most table saws are absolute trash. Even the stock blade that came on the saw stop is not that great. They're trash. They just throw them in there because they can, I don't know. Most table saws are like that. With the exception of the DeWalt job site saw I have here, this blade's actually pretty good for what you're getting. Now there's several different blades to choose from out there and if you start looking, it gets confusing on what is the best blade for you. I'm gonna give you my picks from Good Better Best. Good, a lot of people will kind of frown on this, but the Diablo line of blades are very good for what you're paying for them. They're very inexpensive and they last a decent amount of time. Now, they will not last as far as sharpness goes as long as some of these other brands, but if you just want one that's in a good budget range, these are good blades. I ran them for years on my old Delta table saw. Kind of the middle of the road, the one that I really go with the most, the one I think most people should buy is the CMT Chrome Edition blades. I've been running these for a couple of years now, especially a good 50, 60 tooth, 40 tooth all purpose blade. These are fantastic blades. In that tooth range, 40 to 60 is kind of a combo tooth. So you can do cross cuts and rip cuts and not really have to worry about much tear out. If you're doing a lot of cross cutting or sheet goods, then 80 tooth or so would be better. But for most of us, the 40 to 60 tooth range is perfect. I usually keep a 40 tooth blade on my table saw in most conditions, 40 to 50 tooth, depending on which one I can find on sale. There are some really good high end blades too, if you're doing a lot of work, especially like production work, or if you just want to buy once, cry once, get the best of the best. There's two here that I have. I've used this force blade before. I think it compares really closely to the CMT line. I really wasn't overly impressed with it. Now, one thing that I have liked though is the Ridge Carbide. They did send me this to try out. I've been running it on the table saw for a few weeks now, and I've been very impressed with the quality of this blade, and it's made right here in the USA and by a good small company. So, so far I like it. I'll link to all of those in the description. You can make your decision on what works best for your saw. While we're on the topic of blades, if you don't have a good dado set, I bought this one myself a couple of years ago and it has been an absolute awesome thing to have as far as the table saw, especially if you start doing half laps or you're cutting dados. This dado set is absolutely necessary as an upgrade and not really bad for the price. It'll save you way more time than what you're actually spending on the price of these. The number two upgrade that will not break the bank is a miter gauge. Even this saw stop costs almost $4,000, comes with an embarrassingly bad miter gauge. I don't know why they cheap out on this stuff, but you can get an upgrade, which I did. I purchased this one. This is an Incra V27. This is a very good miter gauge for the price. It's a simple design. You can put a faux fence on it if you want. What I like about the Incra V27 is it fits in a standard T-slot. So it'll work on this job site saw as well as the bigger cabinet saw. But this is one of those tools that you will never regret buying. And it's less than $100. I think they're around $80 or so, uh, depending on the day or the deal you get. This is a good, good upgrade to make for your miter saw. And if you got a little more money to spend, you want something a little bit nicer, a lot more features, you can check out the Harvey Compass. They sent me this a few years ago and I just love having it. They do have an upgraded version now that has a few more features than this one, but this one has been good to me. I like that it has the fence already on there. It has a lot of micro adjustments that you can use. It's just an overall well-made tool that I've had zero trouble of. <laughs> The third upgrade you should make to your table saw is to build you a crosscut sled. If you've never done this, this is one of the easiest builds you can do. All it takes is some plywood, a little bit of time, and some good plans. I've got some good plans on this one. This is my iteration on a crosscut sled. It has handles on the back to make it safer so that your hands are never near that blade. It's one of the things I love most about this sled. It also has a miter fence that lets you cut any angle that you so choose. Because I use the match fit system, you can use their clamps here as well to hold down the parts so you can ensure that your hands don't have to get anywhere near that blade. That's why I call this the safer crosscut slit. And stop block so you can cut most anything. Now what you're going to use this most for is cutting small parts or to ensure you're getting square cuts. That's one of the main things I use this thing for, especially if I want to make sure every side is completely square because I know for a fact this is square because I built it that way. And the great thing about this sled is you can adjust it to fit any miter saw. It'll fit on a job site saw, it'll fit on one of these saws. All you'd have to do is make it a little narrower or wider depending on your saw. It's pretty easy to do. I have a whole video on how to make this. That way you get yours exactly right too. I'll link that in the card above as well as in the description. 
3B is the tapering and jointing jig. These are extremely easy to make. All you need is a piece of plywood, a dovetail bit, and a router. Anybody can make these and it's gonna make your life easier. If you don't have a jointer, you can edge joint with this jig as well as taper if you're making tapered legs or any other thing you need tapered. This is one of the handiest little jigs that's very easy to make. It'll take you about 20 or 30 minutes to make it max. And it's something you'll use all the time. I have a whole video on jointing without a jointer. I'll also link down there, which includes how to build this. And the last jig is this. Kind of looks like a spaceship thing. This is a thin rip jig. It goes into any standard T-slot. What I like about this jig is it's cutting the thin pieces on the left side of the blade. In other words, you're gonna set this jig to the thickness of the thin stock you want. So if it's 1 8 inch, you'll cut that first piece an eighth inch, then you'll move your fence over, make the second cut. That second cut's also gonna be an eighth of an inch. Then you move your fence over. You don't wind up having such a tiny space between the blade and the fence that you can't get that cut, or not safely anyway. I like this because it's cheap and it works. Number four on the list is this, the Jessam Stock Guides. If you cut a lot of sheet goods or even thinner stock, this really helps hold the stock against the fence. Because of the way these things are designed, they have rollers that are kind of slightly tilted towards your fence, and it literally pulls the stock or the plywood or the wood, whatever you're cutting, toward the fence keeps it pressed tight against the fence so you don't have any deviation in your cuts. This is an extremely easy upgrade. Jessel makes some amazing tools. I've been extremely pleased with this. I built this jig based on a design my friend had. I have free plans for this jig. If you, if you have a saw stop, you wanna make the same kind of jig, they're on the website. It's using two mag switches to keep it in place. These lock it down tight. It never budges from there. And then you can adjust these stock guides anywhere you need them to make the cuts that you need. This has been one of the better upgrades I've made to my table saw. And when they're not in use, because they're in mag switch, I can mag switch them to my metal storage cabinets and I, it's just up and out of the way. Or you can hang it, there's a hole here designed so that you can hang it on the wall, keep them out of the way and safe from getting damaged. The good thing about the Jessam stock guides is they can be adapted. You can make jigs to fit basically any table saw that you're using. The only downside to the Jessam stock guides is if you don't have a table saw with a fence similar to this, you'll have to come up with your own jig to fit it to your table saw. That's not hard, we're woodworkers, we build stuff. Stick around after number five, I've got a bonus pick for you that's gonna help make your cuts that much cleaner. Also, I'll give you a way to save some money off my crosscut sled plan or any other plans we have available. Number five on the list, <laughs> feather boards and or push sticks. I know, I know it's a boring topic, but listen to me. There have been multiple people injured by the push stick that comes with their table saw. I made a video about that. There's the thumbnail, what it looks like, and I'll put it in the description below. But typically the push stick that comes with your table saw isn't that great, it's just plastic. Those can shatter and cause massive injuries to your arms, face, torso, etc. I, I highly recommend throwing that thing in the trash and getting a proper one or building your own out of wood. It's really not that difficult to make push sticks depending on what style you like. Obviously the micro jig gripper is one of the best that I recommend because it can basically go over the blade and still keep your hand safe so long as the blade is low enough. That's one of the things you have to watch out for. It is really great when you're cutting thin stock so that you can adjust this little foot. Still gives you quite a bit of balance there. They recently come out with the gripper row too, which is also a really nice little push stick and it works in a few different ways, but overall I like the gripper better. Bow Products makes some push sticks also that have a foam tip. So if it does hit the blade, it just cuts the foam and doesn't damage the plastic. Those are pretty nice as well. And then there are feather boards. Feather boards help keep your stock pushed against the fence, similar to these stock guides. So if you don't have a set of stock guides, this is the next best thing. I made a video with like five different jigs on how to use these in various ways to keep vertical pressure, horizontal pressure, but these bow feather boards are fantastic. And because they are made of that EVA foam, if it does get into the blade, it's not going to throw chunks of shards of plastic back at you. It's just foam. It's not gonna injure you as long as you got your eye protection on. One of the great things about these bow feather boards is the fact that these inserts are replaceable. So if you do damage them, you can just buy a replacement. Because they're foam, they're not gonna mar your wood, but at the same time, they give plenty of pressure against the fence to help prevent some kickback as well as keep it tight against the fence so your cuts are accurate. As far as making your own push sticks, you do whatever you do. <laughs> you can come up with any design you want. There's this tile design that's pretty popular. This, is, this one works well. I've even gotten into the blade a little bit with this one but this keeps your hands pretty good away from the blade, but I like this one as well. This is from a friend at All Red Woodworks. This is his design. Basically, this keeps your hand way up and away from the blade, especially when you're cutting the thinner wood. 
All right, after the bonus tip, I'm gonna give you a power tip, okay? Here's the bonus tip. Get a zero clearance insert for your table saw. I know the Delta slash rigid table saws have them available, especially like on Etsy's where I bought mine. They were just MDF inserts, but that's gonna keep your cuts really clean on the bottom of the cut. And it prevents pieces from falling down in there or if you're cutting thin stock from getting jammed up in there. Sometimes that's happened to me. One of the great things is with a zero clearance, it's not gonna stop up your dust collection because those chunks don't fall in there either. So it just depends on your table saw model. You can usually Google or search it for on Amazon or Etsy and find the inserts pre-made. Sawstop makes their own, that you can find on Amazon as well. You know what time it is, power tip time. The power tip is, I don't care where you're at, what your skill level is, you should buy a tourniquet for your shop. Why? Because these things will stop the bleeding and allow you to have time to get help. If you cut a major artery on your table saw or any other tool in your shop, you literally have about 90 seconds before you black out, give or take. These will save your life or someone in your shop's life. Make sure you buy a name brand and not a knockoff brand. You do not want something breaking on these when you're trying to put them on somebody. It's, that would be catastrophic. What's the purpose of even having one? You may have to spend five or 10 more dollars to get the name brand, but absolutely get one of these. Make sure you watch videos on how to apply these properly. I'll link to a good one in the description and then practice with them on yourself. If you don't practice with them, you'll have no idea what to do when the crap hits the fan. Make sure you're applying these monthly, weekly, however you feel comfortable training with them, but train and put them on your leg, your arm, et cetera. These will save your life for somebody you love. All right, let me save you some money on our crosscut sled plan or any other plan or plan bundle on our website. Go to 731bullworks.com slash store, enter the code JIG20, and you'll save 20% off anything on the store. That includes our famous Outlaws board butter, plans, and more. Go check us out. Let me know in the comments what your favorite table saw upgrade is. If you like this video, watch the crosscut sled build video right there. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also, jointing without a jointer on the table saw with that jig right there.